Good morning, good morning, Fresh Oil family. Let's spend time in the presence of the Lord together. If you can, like the stream, share this with a friend, and let's worship His presence. Amen.
Jesus. your presence.
worship his presence. Give him glory. Spirit, we love you. Thy name, O Lord. 
Glorify thy name, O Lord, in all the earth. The heavens declare your glory. The whole earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glorify thy name. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Sing glorify the name. We glorify thy name. Hallelujah. Precious Lord Jesus, we worship you. There's oil that's breaking out as we worship you. Our lamps are being trimmed. We love you. together sing all the blood of Jesus sing all the blood of Jesus all the blood of Jesus it washes white as snow just one more time, all the blood. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood of Jesus. You know what? your name. We exist to bring you praise. We exist to bring you glory.
praise your holy name. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, that the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you have given me, and they received them, and have known surely that I have come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all are mine and yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. No longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, and I keep your name, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Father, we are one as you are one with the Son. We bless you. We exist to bring you glory. It is your good pleasure that we bear fruit. Holy, we exist to worship you, O Lord. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised and adored. Worthy to be, Worthy praised. To be praised. Worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, 
glorify your name. can bow before the Lord, it's appropriate. I feel the fear of the Lord in here. The Lord said to Abraham, now I know that you fear me because you didn't withhold even your own son from me. We give it all, Lord.
lift him up. Let go of your soul. What you need, what you want. In this moment, you exist to bring him glory. You were created to bring him praise. Worship his presence. Holy presence. Allow a fresh baptism of fire to come over you. Ask Him to fill you again and again. Fresh zeal, fresh passion, fresh oil for you.
don't be drunk with wine which is in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit by speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is what we're doing. Making melody in our heart to the Lord. Singing spiritual songs. Son of God, as you lift him high, as you worship him, songs of the Spirit will come out of your belly. out of your spirit. Uramando roboso. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. We exist to bring you praise. We exist to glorify you, blessed Son of God. God manifested in the flesh. We worship you. Rivers of living water stem from your very being. Voices upon voices emanate from your throne. You are holy, enthroned on the praises of your people. You are high and lifted up, blessed Son of God. We worship you. Your bride adores you. Your bride gives you glory. Uramande libre mensore bekie. Romonte libre mensore. Librante libre manto. Lift up your hands. Lift up a song. Lift up your voice. Utter a song. Lebranen toro robo, y labrante lebremen soro. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory, the Lord strong and mighty? Lift up your song, utter a song. Lift up your hands, lift up your heads, O you gates, and let the King of Glory come. Who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord strong in battle. Uramande lebre mensore, celebrando, celebrevan sobre, 
celebre mensore, si lebre mentora, kira non su rebeye no, si le, si lai, gure mensore behe. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the living Christ. Um, there's a serious breakthrough happening in the spirit. As you exist and bring him praise, let his spirit fall on you. Let joy be your strength again. Let peace fall on you again. Receive strength. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Blessed be His holy name.
fire.
come to me, all who are weary and are laden with burdens. Give them to me, and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. Rest for your weary mind. Give me your burdens. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Lord, we come to you. You're the lifter of our burdens. You wipe every tear from our eye and you give us strength and comfort that bypasses human understanding. Come to me, and I'll give you rest for your soul. Give me your burdens. He cares for you. There is healing when you come to Him. Taken up, taken up. Some of you have been fighting so taken much accusation up. in your mind. Look to the one who was pierced for you. Look to the one. Someone just said in, in your head, in your heart, you said, you don't know where I've been walking, though. And the Lord would say to you, look at my feet, which was pierced for you. You don't know what I've done with the works of my hands. Jesus would say to you, look at my pierced hands. With outstretched arms, the Lord loves you. He was pierced for you and for me. And at his side flows water and blood. The cleansing of our sin. The washing away of the old man. And he would remind some of you that a new dawn has arrived. A new day has emerged. Some of you need to start magnifying the wounds of Christ. He was wounded for you. Some of you are wounded in life. Look to the wounded lamb. Mims V1, the Spirit of the Lord has highlighted you in my heart for the past week. Look to the wounded one, for he cares for you. And his healing hands embrace you and bring wholeness towards you. He says, my daughter, you are loved. You are affectionately embraced by my presence. For my blood speaks a better word than the thoughts and the accusations of the past. For my present presence is here to lift you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. Look to my wounds, my pierced hands and my feet.
come to the foot of the cross you cannot stand in my presence unless it be by the blood only by the blood when I see you I see the blood be strengthened the Spirit of the Lord is singing songs of strength his blood speaks a better word His body was broken for you. He was forsaken for you. Precious Lamb of God, thank you. Bless you. We worship you, Lord. which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside of the camp. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. You are sanctified because of his own blood. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Look at what it says in verse 15 of Hebrews 13. Therefore by him, not by your works, not by your, your, your good deeds, therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, which is what? the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. It is by him and only by him. It is through him and only through him. And the sacrifice that he seeks is your praise. Because he is worthy. It's not because you're worthy, it's because he's worthy. It's not because you're worthy, but because he is worthy. us that cleanses us from all sin By your blood. 
It is by the blood of Jesus. offer this sacrifice of praise to you that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to your name oh hallelujah his wounds speak His wounds speak healing, deliverance, wholeness, forgiveness, grace, peace. His wounds make us whole. flows from him. Healing flows from his very presence. He is the healer. The healer is here. The Lord Jesus. and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. speaks a better word.
magnify the power of the blood of Jesus. Allow the compassions of Christ to wash over you and to strengthen your spirit. Wave upon wave of his love. Mm. Some of you have been through tremendous heartbreak. Allow him to heal your heart. He heals the broken hearted. Some of you need to let go of the bitterness and the resentments and unforgiveness. Allow God to cut you deeply. who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we were yet without sin he is a merciful and compassionate high priest he feels your pain your care before the Lord. Cast your burden before the Lord. like his brothers or brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and as much as he who built the house has more honor than the house.
seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is Hebrews chapter 4. We have a compassionate high priest. Let the Holy Spirit unveil and reveal to you that our blessed Lord Jesus is a merciful, compassionate high priest. I encourage you to look at the scripture on the screen. Meditate on this and worship the Lord as you're meditating on the scripture. And allow the Lord to make the scriptures come alive to you by the Spirit. Let Him breathe into you fresh revelation from the Word of God, feeding your spirit. Come to the feet of the Lord. He does not turn you away. He's compassionate. compassions fill up. As far as the east is to the west, his compassions do not fail. Do not end. We've been made heirs of the Father. Join heirs with Jesus. Filled with the spirit of resurrection. The spirit of adoption.
as far as the east is from the west. His compassions do not fail. He forgives sin. His mercies do not end. There are an unending ocean of divine love. Your waves billow over me, Lord. And your love is stronger than death. stronger than death. What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, has entered into the heart of man for those who love him. I see an endless ocean of love. And he says, as far as the east is from the west, I have forgiven your sin. Do not bring it up anymore. You are forgiven. Whew. His love is so thick. He is so compassionate. eyes are so full of love.
so compassionate. He's standing full of compassion, eyes of love. See the Lord standing, and behind him is an endless ocean of love. Compassions. He's the father of all compassions. He is so loving. His love makes you whole. I can't stop weeping. of God. My Lord. in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask you that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, that you would be filled with the fullness of God. 
<laughs> My Lord Jesus. Father in heaven, I worship you. There's a special revelation of the love of God this morning that he wants us all to comprehend that love that surpasses understanding. we know that love we will be truly mature it is the love of God that perfects us it is his compassions that strengthen us it's the love of God that causes us to be filled with the fullness of God with all of God this be your prayer that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love it's not human love it doesn't even come close it's the love of God is Ephesians 3.17. As you're meditating on the word, allow the spirit to minister to you. Let this prayer from Paul in Ephesians 3.17 become your prayer. May you come to experience that divine love. Thank you. 
break me with your love. Mature me by your love. Fill me. Break me with your love, O oh Lord. A love so deep. It's a suffering kind of love, a love that wounds, that hurts that feels its compassion selfless unconditional love agape love He can take the callous heart and break it into powder. He can take the heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh.
don't have words for it. to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Fill us with the fullness of your love.
Lord is healing and restoring hearts to Him. describe it but it's like this love that comes from the father that is so pure that that it hurts (laughs) I don't know how to describe that I can tell you (laughs) there's no words it's very hard to put it into language His love perfects us. <laughs> Perfected love is His love in us. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been justified by faith. You're declared just. He declares you justified 
by believing by faith. Because of this, we have peace with God. True peace. Through whom our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been justified by believing. Therefore, we have peace with the Father through our Lord Jesus. Through whom also we have access. by faith into this grace in which we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Through Jesus, we have this access to God by faith into this grace, this unmerited favor in which we stand. Why? Because we are declared justified, because we have peace with God the Father, and because of this, we have access to God by faith, by believing, and by His grace we stand. And because of this, we rejoice. Joy unspeakable and full of glory are in his presence, for in his presence there is fullness of joy. And we rejoice in what? Hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we glory in tribulations. knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now let's look at this you have been justified by faith you have peace with god through our lord jesus we have access into his holy presence by believing into what this grace. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is the ability to do what you cannot do on your own. You have access by believing into this grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. And look what he says. It says, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. You can stand on the fact that we have grace and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, your trials, your tests. Why? Because we have inside information. Because we have hope. Because we have a confident expectation. We can glory in trials and tribulations knowing that tribulation produces something. Your trials your tribulations and your tests produces perseverance. Perseverance is the ability to keep moving forward. It's to be persistent. It means to endure. And perseverance, character, so not only does tribulation produces perseverance, but it doesn't stop there. The perseverance produces character. The character of the Lord Jesus in your life. And character, hope. 
Hope is the confident expectation of God. Now, hope does not disappoint. Because what? The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Trials produces perseverance. Perseverance produces godly character. Godly character, the fruit of hope. And hope, love, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. There are three that remain forever. One day, all of the gifts will cease. At the consummation of the age, when our blessed Lord Jesus returns to establish us and gives us a resurrected and corporal body. And the Apostle Paul tells us that there are three things that will last forever. Faith, which is believing. Hope, which is a confident expectation. And love, which is the love of God. He tells us this in 1 Corinthians 13. But he says, the greatest of these is love. And it's amazing to me how the scriptures weave a tapestry of patterns. Faith, hope, love. Faith, hope, love. 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and love will last forever. And here we see something so powerful. We see faith in verse 1. We see hope in verse 2. And we see love in verse 5. Faith, hope, and love. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have access to God by faith, by believing. And that faith produces hope. Hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is not something that you cross your fingers and you hope it's real or you hope it happens. No, hope is the vehicle to take you from one destination to the next. Faith says, I believe it now. Hope says, I will see the hand of the Lord take me through. Faith, hope is so important. Faith is now. Hope is what is expected to come. Hope does not disappoint. You may have placed your hope in the wrong thing. You've made maybe have placed hope in people or you've placed hope in your own aspirations or your own desires or your own dreams. But true hope in the Lord does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What does that mean? That the Holy Spirit has deposited the love of God into us as a down payment of what's to come, the hope of eternal life, the expectation of the fullness of our salvation. But also this hope can be applied even now in your situations and in the things that are that you're going through in your life. Your perseverance, your trials and tribulations, they're just temporary. The scripture tells us, For I am convinced that the sufferings of this present age are not even worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. There is an eternal hope. There is a hope in which is a fullness of the salvation, the resurrection of the body, the fullness of the coming of the Lord Jesus. But there's also a hope in our lives as well. You are not going to stay stuck in your trial. You're not going to stay stuck in this temporary situation you're seeing as a test. Let hope rise within you, knowing that he will confidently take you from one degree of glory to the next. Look at what Verse 5 says, hope does not disappoint because what? The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. 
And he says here, for or because when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Isn't that powerful? When we were still without strength, when we had no strength to give, in due time, in the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. We were all ungodly at one point of our lives. Before Christ, our minds were alienated, dark and separated from God, from the life of God. Scripture says in verse 7, For scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, while we were still alienated, while we were still darkened in our imaginations, while we were still lovers of self and the flesh and of and all these things and the corruptions of this age, while we were still spitting in the face of God, God lovingly bled in return. He gave his life for us. That is the overwhelming love of God that surpasses understanding. We cannot comprehend that type of love. That type of love destroys kingdoms of darkness. That type of love translates us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That kind of love tears down strongholds. That kind of love causes empires to fall. Much more than, verse 9, having now been justified by what? By your good deeds? By your own efforts? By your own righteousness? No. Having been now justified by His blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. There is a day of reckoning. There is a revelation of the holiness of God that will come. There is a day in which the wrath of God will be poured out like a strong drink over the earth. But those who are justified by his blood are saved from that wrath. Through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through his death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. His life saves us. It's his blood. His very life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Isn't that powerful? The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit, whom has been given to you. And this brings us to Ephesians chapter 3. Look at this. To me, verse 8, to whom the Apostle Paul, to whom who am less than all the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Isn't it interesting? The man that wrote three quarters of the New Testament refers to himself as the least of all saints. True apostolic function and ministry is the revelation of understanding that it is the least of all saints. In a world of super apostles, <laughs> the apostle Paul is the least of all saints. The first are last. The last are first. Those who serve are the beginning. True apostolic calling is to see yourself as the least of all. And I love it because he says, I'm the least of all the saints. This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And he's not, he's not being, he's not exaggerating here. 
He truly considered himself to be the less than the least of all the saints. A man that was bankrupt, totally dependent upon God, fully aware of his own weaknesses. This grace was given to him that he should preach among the Gentiles. Look, the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's like Paul is like a lost man in an endless ocean of unsearchable riches of Jesus. <laughs> He's without words. The unsearchable riches of Christ, it is unsearchable. The riches of Christ are beyond measure, are beyond comprehension and understanding. It is unsearchable. It is unfathomable. It is uncontainable. It is without words. It truly cannot be measured. There is no measure to the limitless riches of Christ. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery? There is a fellowship of the mystery, which is from beginning of ages and has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the church, the church is meant to teach principalities and powers a thing or two. The church is the wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God reflecting as the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, just like Romans 5, look, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. You and I have been given boldness. Oh man, I feel the anointing. <laughs> We've been given boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Be bold. Have confidence because it's by him and for him and unto him and through him. Confident. Be bold. You have access to God through faith in him. Jesus says, I am the door. He that comes in and out of me finds pasture. We can have boldness and access with confidence because it is by Him. It is not based on my performance or how well I do or how well you do. It is all based by His perfected work at Calvary. It is all based by His perfected work being made visible, God becoming flesh for us. We come in to the presence of God because God came into the presence of man. And because God came into the presence of men, men can come into the presence of God through him who became flesh so that those of the flesh would be born again and become in the Spirit to be reconciled with God. Look at what verse 13 says, Therefore I ask you that you do not lose heart on my tribulations for you, which is for your glory. Look what it says in verse 14. For this reason, in light of all these things that we just discussed, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God is your father. He is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are part of a family. Verse 15 says, For whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are a part of a kingdom of priests. We are a part of a holy family. The Father and the Son invite us to become sons of God. The Lord Jesus is the captain of our salvation, and he brings many sons to glory, as the book of Hebrews declares. The whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. God wants to strengthen you through the Holy Spirit in the inner man. He wants to strengthen you with his glory, with his power, by his Holy Spirit in the inner man. Oftentimes we live from the outside in, but the kingdom of God is to be lived from the inside out. The world wants to pour in. The kingdom is to be lived and to pour out. Now, why does he want, why is Paul praying this? That we would be strengthened through his spirit and the inner man. God wants to give you strength, spiritual strength by his power. But it's for a purpose. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. This glory this power that, that God grants to the family of heaven and earth is so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through believing. So you can see that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. What do we see here? That the power of God, the glory of God, wills to be granted to you in your inner man so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith so that you would become rooted and grounded in love. It's the power of God that leads you to the love of God. Jesus Christ, Scripture says, is both the power and the wisdom of God. The cross is the power of the gospel. I preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified so that your faith would not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The power of God is meant to ground you in the love of God so that you may be able to comprehend what is the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Isn't that interesting? That in verse 18, that you may be able to comprehend this love that passes understanding. It is a spiritual comprehension. This leads us to believe that it is not a mental comprehension. Because it passes knowledge. It defies our intellect and logic. God wants us to spiritually comprehend the love of God, the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. For what purpose? That you may be filled with the fullness of God. God wants to fill you with the fullness of himself. And collectively, he wants to fill us with Father, Son, Holy Spirit to know the love of God, the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. 
He wants to fill you with all the fullness of God. This sounds exactly like Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, where it says, He, the Father, and He put all things under His feet. Whose feet? The Lord Jesus' feet. And gave him, who? The Lord Jesus, to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of Christ. The body of Christ is the fullness of God. That's the prayer of Paul that we see in Ephesians 3. Let's turn back there. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You want to be filled with all the fullness of God. We must be be knowers of the love of Christ. We must know the love of Christ. We must become intimate and acquainted with the love of Christ. So that we would be filled with all the fullness of God. That is a mystery that we cannot comprehend with our minds. The things of the Spirit are not understood intellectually, or logically. They're comprehended and received spiritually. They are perceived and discerned spiritually. This is why the natural man cannot receive the things of God because it is foolishness to the man that is of a natural order. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the scripture says. It is spiritual. It is not meant to try to quantify or to try to dissect and to figure out. It is only to be experienced, to be truly known, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. See, many times we're filled with theory, but God wants to fill us with experience. And if we're not careful, as C.S. Lewis puts it, We can end up loving God and experiencing that love. And then because of human compulsion, we love talking more about the love of God and just talking about God instead of experiencing and knowing that love personally for ourselves. He wants us to be filled with the fullness of God, but how? By the overwhelming love of Christ. Verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He does above all that what we ask or think according to the power that works what in us. That power is on the inside of you. It is not you. It is him in you. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. You want to be mature. You want to grow. We must grow in the love of God, the love of Christ that surpasses comprehension and understanding. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, tells us in verses 14 through 16, again, this love of Christ. This is so beautiful because Christ Jesus has so much compassion. Even now as we were worshiping, I can see his compassions. 
for his church. How do we how do I come to see this by the spirit and by the word of God? Every glimpse of reflection into the word of God is an is a glimpsing of the glory of Christ and being transformed to see. We come to behold the Lord of glory by looking through the word And what does the word of God tell us about Jesus? That he is compassionate. He just doesn't have love like a human does. He is full of compassions. He suffers long. His compassions are so strong. Do you know what compassion means? In Spanish, it's called compasión. It's with passion. It's with feeling, with, with a wound. It's a love that hurts. <laughs> It's a love that feels, a love that is willing to suffer long, long suffering. There is an aspect of Christ that we are often uncomfortable with. It's the sufferings of Christ. And the scripture tells us quite clearly that we have been baptized into his glory, but also into his sufferings. There is a suffering that Christ invites us to. There is a suffering that he feels for the church, that he feels for the world. There is a aching, a longing of his heart that hurts as a priest. I find it very interesting that nowhere in the New Testament or the Old Testament, when referring to the sacrifice of Christ, does it refer to him as scars, rather wounds. He was wounded. When Jesus revealed himself to Thomas, who doubted, He didn't say, put your hands on my scars. He said, touch my wounds. There is a part in Christ that this love is so deep that it hurts. I'm convinced that Jesus does not have scars. He has wounds. His hands and his feet are wounded. He feels. He has the ache and the longing of his heart for the church to become like him. There is this aspect of suffering that we as spirit-filled, charismatic believers feel uncomfortable with because we don't like to talk about suffering. But there is a love that is so deep that it hurts. Look what he says here, seeing then that we have what? A great high priest. He's great. Who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast to our believing. What is he talking about? What confession? The confession of Christ as Lord. Hold fast to your believing in him. Why? For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, we have a high priest who sympathizes, who feels. To, to be sympathetic means to feel, to sympathize sympathy, sympathetic. It's to feel with someone. And the scripture says, we, have a, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. In other words, we have one who can. 
He sympathizes with our weaknesses. But was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. When the next time you struggle with a situation, a temptation, remember that Jesus sympathizes with you. He feels it. Let's look at this word, sympathize. It means, oh, look at this. Look what it says. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Kind of. Look what it means here. Sympatheo. And it means to commiserate, to have compassion, be touched with the feeling of. That's our Jesus. He is touched with the feeling of our weaknesses. Why? Because he was baptized in it. He was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And because of this, look at the response. Let us therefore come boldly. Why do we come boldly? Because he feels you. He has the feeling of. He knows. Don't disqualify yourself when he has qualified you by his blood. Don't disqualify yourself when he has not. Because of this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You want grace? You want more grace? Come to the throne of grace. You want mercy? Come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Why would God, as my dear beloved brother in Christ, Eric Gilmore says, why would God withhold his presence from us if it's his presence that makes us holy? If it's his presence that makes us whole? Why would God withhold himself when it's he himself who makes us whole? powerful this love of god is too powerful to be comprehended it's beyond comprehension scripture tells us that our lord jesus makes intercession for the saints he intercedes the holy ghost on the inside of you makes intercession for you as well with groanings that are too deep for words the love of god is truly unfathomable it cannot be comprehended with the mere intellect it must only be known and experienced if you can do me a favor if this stream has been a blessing to you would you please do me a favor would you like the stream it really does help us quite a bit and also on the pinned section of the chat i have our registration for our Houston event. If you enjoy praying with us like this, come to our fresh oil outpouring event that we host every annual, uh, every year, once a year, somewhere. Last year we did it in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and this year we're doing it in Houston, Texas. Come, register. It's 100% free because freely we've received and freely we want to give. Here's a quick little snippet of what to expect for the Houston event. You feel like you're searching and you're seeking for something and you can't fill that. Friend, let me tell you something. That fill and that 
that void can only be met by Jesus. Praise God, everyone. Don't forget to register. It is 100% free because freely we've received, freely give. We are freely giving this. Amen. These events cost tens of thousands of dollars to do, but we are trusting the Lord fully. Would you consider donating monthly or one time to the ministry of Father's glory by texting the number on the screen? You can text GLORY to 801-801. All of your proceeds helps make this media ministry possible. Help us by becoming fully crowdfunded so that we can continue providing free e-courses, free e-books, and free events free of charge. Would you consider making a one-time donation or a monthly contribution to supporting the ministry? You can also visit our website. You can go to fathersglory.org. You can like, share, subscribe to the channel. Also, visit us at our church. You can visit thehouseofglory.org, thehouseofglory.org for more information. Subscribe to House of Glory um, on our YouTube channel. You can scroll down on my main page. It says our church is called House of Glory. It's in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We have intercession from 1.30 p.m. And service ends roughly around 3.30, 3.45 p.m. We spend a solid two, sometimes three hours just praying, worshiping, interceding. My favorite time of service is our moments of intercession. Sometimes I don't even like uh, when I have to transition because the intercession is so powerful. And so... Um, uh, also, the, the other thing uh, that I'm going to say is I want to say thank you for all of our YouTube members who have met, who have become uh, uh, supporters of the channel. All of your support goes to uh, giving uh, my family personally support uh, so that we can continue to not be a financial burden on House of Glory or Father's Glory. My prayer is that we would be fully supported so that we can continue to not be a financial burden on anyone. All right, my friends, now it is this time for me to go. We will not be doing a fresh oil after stream party because I have a few meetings that I need to attend to today. Thank you for your understanding on that. And we will see you Wednesday um, via live. Also, after the live stream on Wednesday, I want to say this. I will be, uh, we will be having a special prophetic convergence live stream with my dear friend, prophet Rob Sanchez, Troy Black, and Alwyn Weiss. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be on Troy Black's channel Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. But I will see the rest of you Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. on the stream here at Fresh Oil. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you all. 
And thank you so very much for your prayers. Remember, we have a compassionate high priest. He loves us. Amen.